Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Friday morning to everyone out there. I hope you're doing great. Uh, hope you're stealing some company time or ignoring your kids or whatever brings you joy in life. Let's harness that today and have an epic weekend. I'm going to be hitting the road next week, so I'll be doing some reporting from my mobile studios. You might see Panama Hat Dave. It's going to be a whole mood. Hey, why not right now? Let's just get into it. All right, fine. Here we are. It's a Friday. Grab your daiquiri. This story is both inspirational and disgusting at the same time. Disgusting how our boy Cam was treated by Bachelor producers. No surprise there. He has a disease, and they refused to uh, let him share his message, not just on the show, but also in the reunion episodes, he had a message that he wrote that was blurred out. Just disgusting. When I heard this story first, I didn't really know how to attack it because... You know, it's like, all right, this is, he's, you know, he, he's not like a main character. He's not a lead. He's, you know, he's he doesn't have a giant following, which should never be a reason not to discuss these issues. But, you know, we got to get clicks so people can watch these videos. That kind of sounds a little bit uh, fatalistic here, but that's how it works. That's how it works, folks. So, uh, so there's a lot of stories we pass up on. This isn't it. This isn't it. So let's get into it. Follow me on Instagram at Neal's Patreon right after this, 10 a.m. Pacific time, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'll be sharing some of uh, the, the unboxings of what's going on. Look what came in, guys. The new DJI Mavic Mini 3 Pro. Not a sponsorship. Way too expensive uh, to be, you know, uh, knocking this off of palm trees because I hopefully will not crash it. Cross my fingers. But I will be sharing a lot of the uh, things going on behind the scenes. Okay, so... Batrut's Cam says he's still crushed by disheartening show edit after like amputation. I'm going to share several different clips, but let's just get the spark notes first. Um, not a rosy experience. He reflect on his time on the Bachelorette, calling the way the show handled his lymphedema battle a missed opportunity for the show. Literally, the show should be called Missed Opportunities because it's just one thing after another that they get wrong. In their effort to try to create drama and ratings, they miss out on humanity, on moments that would be uplifting conversations worth having one thing he says this one thing that just like still to stay still to stay crushes me is that was my coming out of being lymphedema patient i had been hiding it for years if you were to look on my social media prior to the bachelorette and all the other reality tv stuff i never talked about it i never even had pictures of me wearing my garments because i was ashamed i was in hiding so to have a show that has millions of people who watch it i could have had a better representation for my lymphedema community by wearing my compression garments with pride by talking about it and not having the conversation removed from what actually aired that was really disheartening for me and even in the bachelor in paradise reunion i had a t-shirt made that said i have lymphedema google it you know that's not a t-shirt with a nike logo or a john deere logo or a buy my skinny t logo you know sometimes we have to we, they have to call what's called greeking it which is when they remove logos and brands that they don't have um you know the the rights to uh lymphedema is not uh, owned by a corporation although i'm sure if the pharmaceutical industry could buy it they would so they blurred it out he told us that he had told the producers he was going to wear the shirt so they couldn't edit him anymore. They blurred out the writing. This is my moment to bring representation to the 10 million Americans who don't have to fight for themselves, who don't even know the name of the disease that they have. That was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. So there it is, folks. Let's have a listen from his words and his voice. Do me a favor. Follow this guy on Instagram. You know, whatever we can do to share his message you know, it's free. Go, you know, go take the moment to go over there and take There's going to be moments where the pain feels way too overwhelming and that's okay. Like God wants you to wrestle in the relationship with him. And I think another thing that scares me about this upcoming surgery is that the pain may be so intense that I could become someone else. Yeah. He's, so he's had the surgery and we're going to get to the before the after photos, his message there, but wild stuff. Young man, strong. And, you know, that is that is scary to me because, you know, we, we don't know how it's going to end up. But I think sure. that's what, what faith is about is trusting that God has gone before you and that everything is going to be okay. Now, you look, you know, th there's, there's going to be a group of people that think I bash religion. I bash the powers that come from religion, the people that take advantage and say, well, God says do this, and God says I bash that. I bash those that use religion in passages out of context to manipulate others, control their bodies, this, that, and the other. When it comes to faith, regardless of your religion or lack thereof, regardless of what you believe in, atheist, uh, Christian, Muslim, whatever it may be, Having faith that things will work out, 
whether there is a overarching thing that bonds us all or not, that faith is free and that faith will help things get better. To think that, you know, you might get fired one day and, and think that it's the end of the world, but it's really an opportunity coming the next day. Uh, to think that, you know, you, sh- you want to take a left turn and, and everything in the world makes you go right. Have faith that if you keep walking forward in a direction with love, positivity, and things like that, that the answers will come out. So that's where the triumph comes in. When, it, when you talk about this tragedy that truly does exist with Cam when it comes to what's going on with his body. So here he is, his final workout with two God-given legs. Life is full of firsts and lasts. Today I put on my full leg compression garment for the last time. I completed my last two leg workouts. So can you believe this? And it's one thing, you know, people get into car crashes or whatever. It's, it's when people do either lose their, lose a limb, I could only imagine, or are born with certain disabilities, that's just the only life they know. For him to come from an able-bodied, and maybe you could argue that he was never really able-bodied because this disease has made it very painful, and I couldn't imagine what that pain is, but as you see, he'll have to put on his compression like uh, his compression um, socks or garments. So there he is. And, you know, you, you'll see a lot of elderly people wear these that help circulation. And obviously people like with him, like he can barely, uh, if you just saw a photo of him, you'd think his body's perfectly fine, but you can see he can barely bend over there. Really just, you know, tragic on one end. But then again, knowing that he's got no other options but to live his life, here he is. And if that's not something that can inspire all of us, I mean, we got to rethink things. It's very powerful. Very, very powerful message this man is sharing right now. We haven't been sleeping on this story. Just don't even, it's just complicated. So there he is. And then here's a few days later. Gotta love Bromentum. So there he is getting some love at the Texas Medical Center. As an amputee, hashtag camputee, love a good pun, camputee, there he is, hair's looking nice too, and um, a lot of love from the community, but unfortunately, this is just how it works, you know, Bachelor's a popularity contest, yeah, he doesn't have a giant following, so these things just don't make the type of news that they would if he was, say, the lead on a show, and the show sort of did, I don't want to say make a mockery of him, but they, 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 we weren't able to see this sort of dimension of who he is in the battles that he's facing. So look at all the love. And a lot of times when there's different forms of tragedy that exist out there, the positive is how you see others react, come together. (laughs) Getting a rose from his, um, I don't know if this is a nurse, caregiver. I don't know who this is, but he's giving Cam the rose there. Very nice. Very nice. So these are the inspirational moments that come from an otherwise real tragic story. The moments that weren't aired, you know, on Bachelor, Bachelorette. The, you know, and obviously, you know, to, to give producers any sort of credit, they uh, they clearly didn't know or were ignorant to the severity of what his uh, what his illness was. Uh, which is too bad. They should have looked into it a little more if they didn't. But of course, you know, clearly he talked to producer and said, you edited me out now for the, f- f- you know, now for the after show, the Bachelor in Paradise, whatever. He says, I'm going to wear this shirt. And they, they just had a real moment. They had a real moment that they, that they decided not to, um, not to pursue. So here, here he is. I'm just going to share a minute of this talking on his TED talk last year when he still had both legs. Ish. I'm not bald yet. I have an amazing family a great group of friends, and to top it off, I have a degree from the best university in all the land, Texas A&M. But why is it at times have I felt so depressed, so alone, and frankly, so unfulfilled? Let's break it down. Maybe it's because I could never keep up with the Kardashians. I've never had nearly as much money as my close friends. All of my jobs have been just going through the motions. I failed at love, not once, but twice on national television. And to put the cherry on top, 
I was born with a chronic condition that nearly took my leg and potentially my life in 2017. Taking a slick. Now I know some of you may be asking, hey Cam, would you like some cheese or bread with that wine of yours? So it's a great story and maybe he'll do another TED Talk coming from the other side of the surgery here. Uh, but turning triumph into, or turning tragedy to triumph. And again, just a little bit of inspiration for us out there. When we think we have issues, when we think, you know, we don't have to, you know, have one of those um, victimization uh, sort of uh, battles where who's got it worse. But this is a guy that lives with a certain privilege that, you know, as, you know, the white guy walking around where people, you know, on the surface didn't get to see or treat him with the humanity of someone who's going through a disease. As we know, some diseases you go bald and some you, you, you know, you're not an able-bodied person, different things. But how many of us, is the question, are walking through life with their own version of a disease that other people don't know exists. For those reasons alone, I think we need to be better at our compassion, knowing that someone cuts you off in traffic, or even if your boss, now it doesn't mean you have to be a, uh, you know, a, a boxing bag to your boss's aggression, but everybody out there has something they're battling, demons they're battling, and you don't want to be a walking mat to that, but I think we can all just leave a little room for for each other in knowing that we don't know the full story. Here's what he said this past week. I'm sorry, this was released today, revealing his battle with lymphedema and what it has taught him. Let's play this and then we'll uh, wrap this up. What has this whole process, um, what has this taught you? Yeah, um, it's, it's taught me to give myself some grace. I think grace, especially our generation, we're in this society that almost demands perfection. And when you're scrolling on social media, you get these snapshots of these people portraying perfection. And then when you don't embrace your own insecurities or maybe your shortcomings, or in my case, my, my stub now, <laughs> I'm going to have to embrace this because yes. there's going to be very vain and shallow people out there who are going to look at my amputated leg or may have looked at my lymphedema and seen that as somewhat of a, a burden to them versus a blessing versus I get to help this person on their journey. This person hopefully has a heart of, of compassion for others who may have disabilities. So I would say find your, find your peace, give yourself grace, and then align yourself with people who are going to build you up versus bring you down regardless of their clout or their social status. It doesn't matter because when we die, we don't get to bring our followers with us. Okay, and let's check out the recovery timeline. So the process of now getting your prosthetic and everything, is there a timeline um, for the rehab and everything like that? Do, they, do you have like a calendar set? How does that work? I do, yeah. And so just high level, once you have the actual surgical procedure, on average it takes patients anywhere from two to four weeks for the wound to heal because you can't start getting fitted for the prosthesis until the base of the, the wound is healed because that's basically where you put most of your weight, right? So like here on my nub, that's where mm -hmm. it is. It, it's kind of tipped. It doesn't really look like that. It looks like a frosty snow cone right now. <laughs> <laughs> but they basically, once they have those stitches out, then it takes about two weeks to get a temporary prosthesis, kind of like a loner leg, if you will. That way they can see how, how the bone is fitting inside the socket and make sure you're not getting any pressure blisters or anything like that. And then once they're confident about that fit, then they actually do another casting, which they, you know, get all the fiber optic type of material or carbon fiber rather, and they send that off and then you get your leg. So the whole process from start to finish takes about two months. So I am hoping that um, by mid-September, my birthday, I'll oh. have my, my new leg. Oh, see, that's And then nice. you have to learn how to walk on it or walk with it and make sure it's not too short or too long and not rubbing anywhere. Yep. And it's a process for sure. Yeah. And I did something kind of uh, aggressive here, like in my pre-surgery manic uh -oh. behavior, if you will. Um, I uh -oh. am like obsessed with Lauren Daigle, the singer. Mm -hmm. And I saw that she's doing a short little tour and I'd never seen her live. And so she's performing at Red Rocks in Colorado <sighs> on the 20. 1st of September. So I'm like, okay, that's going to be my milestone that I'm going to work my tail off in physical therapy to get myself ready for that milestone so I can 
be there to, to see her front row. And uh, I'm obsessed with her too. Yeah. Obsessed with Heck her. Heck yeah. She's so yeah. good. Set that goal though. That's a good. Yeah. Yep. Goals I are did. good. So good I like goal. already t- tickets are purchased. And so nice. I'm not going to look back. So hopefully uh, it all works out. It's a beautiful moment to have my first concert back with uh, Miss Daigle. Wow. Woo. All right, folks. How's that for a message? When we die, we don't get to bring our followers with us. Be well out there. Have a good weekend, everybody. So the process of now... Na-